Looks like we're live. Hello, everyone, and welcome to yet another recreation programming session with Amista Zuzin. Let's make a little bit of an announcement and officially start the stream. Uh, so, red freaking circle live on Twitch. And what are we doing today on Twitch at a television website? Today, we're working on the next video project in Rust. I'm going to give the link to where we're doing all of that, which is TV slash Zodin. And I'm going to, of course, ping everyone who's interested to be in being pinged. And there we go. The stream has officially started. The stream has officially started. So uh, recently, I finally released my video about Eper's game development, right? So it is on the main channel, which is uh, at Zoding. And I really recommend you to subscribe to this channel because I'm going to be releasing more videos there soon, right? So I'm trying to revive this channel. So there I'm going to be posting high quality uh, edited videos, right? So I'm going to post it in the chat and for people on YouTube Daily. YouTube Daily is the channel where I post votes, by the way. Uh, for people on YouTube Daily, I recommend to subscribe to this channel. And uh, the video about Eper's game development is this one, which is called Will Ada Replace C and Slash C++. Uh, right, I really recommend to watch it, even though it's relatively long, 44 uh, minutes, it's actually highly edited. So people said that it's easy to watch because of that, right? So there is no uh, dead air or anything like that. It's like all straight to the point. It's actually very informationally dense. So I really recommend to check it out. It's like, I'm, I'm actually super proud of this Hello. video. Uh, I think this is the channel. best uh, quality of the content I've done so far, right? I think, uh, right. And I want to... <laughs> And I want to make more of such videos, honestly, right? I really want to make more of such videos. And that's exactly what we're going to be doing today. Right, so I, I'm trying to explore this format where I'm just like working on a project on uh, on Twitch and then uploading to, um, you know, Zoding Daily. And once I'm done, I'm doing sort of like a summary of what I've done on the main channel, highly edited, uh, with a lot of in-depth explanations and stuff like that. I think it's a good format. I think it's a good format because it enables me to work on like this long, deep projects, something that I could allow myself to do right because people would not really watch the, the whole process now i don't really have to worry about people watching the whole process because the final product is the thing that i'm striving for right so um yeah so what we're going to be doing today uh i i'm going to be implementing the project that i want you to start for i think already two times so this is going to be the third time right so i want to implement a programming language more of like a, uh, more like esoteric programming language i don't think it's going to be a real useful production programming language you know experimental programming language that is based on turing machine right so uh, some of you probably know what i'm talking about right so i already tried to start this project several times and because of how i produced the content i couldn't really integrate it into my content flow so to speak if that makes any sense right so let's actually see what is a turing machine turing machine uh, right, it's a very simple um, computational model created by Alan, Alan Turing. So uh, here it is. So essentially, a Turing machine by itself is uh, a very simple mechanism, right? So it has an infinite um, tape, right, with the cells, right? And cells can store... Uh, some sort of a value, some sort of a symbol, right? And then uh, the Turing machine has a head, uh, and the head have a position within the tape. It can read a symbol from the tape. It can write the symbol to the tape. It can it can move left and right, and stuff like that. Right, so, and the program that you write is actually uh, a table, a table, uh, like sort of like a state table of the, of the Turing machine. So, uh, yeah, so let's actually go in here, uh, where it is, uh, I think this is something there, okay. So let me, let me try to do the following thing. Um, Right. So uh, the program, as I already said, is going to be a table, right? So in the first column of the table is some sort of a state. What state the Turing machine is currently in, right? So it's a state. Then uh, the next column of that table is going to be a read column, uh, which means um, what is the current symbol at the uh, machine's head? Right. What's the current symbol at the machine head? And uh, the next table is going to be write, 
which denotes the symbol that you need to write into the current cell uh, if the machine is in this state and it reads this symbol currently at its head. So then uh, you have to denote a direction in which you have to step either left or right. So after you read a symbol and made the decision what to write, uh, you have to move the head either to the left or right. Uh, and uh, th that's basically the fourth column. And the last fifth column is what's going to be the next state, right? So that's basically the table of the Turing machine. and sequence of the rows, sequence of these uh, five elements is the program in Turing machine terms, if I understand how Turing machine works correctly. There are some different modifications for the Turing machines um, that may alter the specific columns of the table. For example, there are variants of the Turing machine that have two heads. Uh, I suppose in that uh, case, you would have to have two reads, two writes, two steps, but, but the next state is probably going to be the same. Right, so the, the, ne the next state is going, probably going to be the same. And de depending on the architecture of the machine, this sort of like a program for the Turing machine might be different. Uh, wouldn't you need two next states for branching? Not really, you actually don't need that. Right, so um, essentially, let's, let's actually try to write sort of like a very simple program. Uh, right, so which increments a binary number? Right, so this is already a classical example that I already demonstrated in on one of my previous Turing machine streams, but I want to repeat it because it's a very good example, I think. Uh, we can imagine that our mm, uh, sort of tape initially consists of basically bits, right? So here is the thing. The, um, the Turing machine doesn't really have to be uh, zeros and ones. The, the cells don't have to be bits they can contain any number of symbols and different kinds of symbols. And the set of symbols that the tape uh, can contain, I think it's called basically dictionary, right? So different Turing machines that you design may have different sort of like vocabulary rather, not really dictionary, but different vocabulary. So um, if we want to increment the binary number, we may want to pick a vocabulary that consists of zeros and ones. Right. So in, in that case, uh, this particular Turing machine is going to be a binary Turing machine. But depending on the problem, on the domain you're working with, you can actually use whatever symbols. And I would actually encourage you to use whatever symbols because not everything is easily described in binary. Everything, pretty much everything is describable in binary, but not everything is easily describable in binary. And you will see that in a minute. And not even a minute, but in like a little bit later in, in the stream. So and essentially, uh, we have a tape that contains bits and that tape uh, stores a number. So let's actually say that the least significant bit starts from the left. That way it's, it's going to be uh, like easier for us to sort of increment that number. How would you write a program that increments this number by one? All right. So essentially, uh, let's denote the entry state as inc because it's increment, right? So the name of the state can be any symbol actually, right? Whatever symbol that you want, right? So, and this is going to be the initial entry state of the Turing machine. So what's going to be the read? In case of zero, we want to actually write one. It doesn't really matter where we're going to be moving left or right. So let's actually move to the right. And that's about it, right? So if the first, the least significant bit is zero, the only thing you have to do, you have to replace it with one and basically halt. And th that's about it. Th that is literally it. So the, the most interesting thing uh, comes when you are in the increment state and you encounter one. What do you do in that case? You have to switch it to zero, right? Move to the right and continue being in the ink state, right? And that actually implements the increment. Right. So essentially, you have this kind of situation. You are in an increment state. You see zero. You replace it with one. You halt. There you go. You incremented uh, the value by one. Uh, if you have this kind of value, right, how it is going to work? You are in an increment state. You encounter one. You replace it with zero. You go to the right. You are still in an increment state. You encounter one. You replace it with zero. You go to the right. You do that thing yet again. You go to the right and you encounter zero for the first time you get this situation, you write one and you hold. So 
there you go, you just incremented the binary number by one. So th that's how you program in, uh, in this kind of Turing machine. And this is essentially the, the language that I want to implement. It, it's, it's kind of a very simple language, uh, right? And there is nothing particularly special about it. Like I can imp probably implement this variant of the language uh, within a single stream. But I want to go a little bit further. I want to go a little bit further. I want to implement sort of like a preprocessor on top of this base language. So this is going to be the base language. This is going to be the base language. On top of it, there will be kind of like a meta language that allows you to generate rules in a more generic sense. In a more generic sense. And essentially, the language is going to look like this. I made a screenshot. I was experimenting with the syntax and stuff like that. But the, the, the language is going to look like this, essentially. So there's additional like things, like for loops, that allow you to pregenerate the different rules and also define sets of symbols and iterate on those sets of symbols to generate more different rules. So that way, you can actually write a pretty complicated program in Turing machine. For example, this is a implementation of a rule 110 in, Turing, in that imaginary Turing machine language. And because of this, um, additional meta language on top of the Turing machine, I will argue, I will argue that it will make it super easy to implement a universal Turing machine. Do, do you guys know what is a fucking universal Turing machine? Do you guys know what is a universal Turing machine? Uh, it's a Turing machine that is an interpreter of a Turing machine. So, uh, Turing Alan Turing himself demonstrated that it is possible to implement a Turing machine interpreter using Turing machine. And he called that interpreter a universal Turing machine. Right. So I think there is a mentioning of universal Turing machine in here. Universal. Yeah, yeah. Universal Turing machine. It's a Turing machine that interprets another Turing machine. And he actually used the notion of a uh, universal Turing machine to basically demonstrate uh, that halting problem is in unresolvable, right? Because it relies on notion of sort of like a program that acts like other program. It, it relies on that. So, and uh, whatever syntax I just discovered that makes it easy to generate this kind of rules, I feel like I haven't actually demonstrated that for myself. I haven't implemented a uni uh, universal Turing machine, but I feel like it will make it easy to actually implement a universal Turing machine. Uh, and it's going to be actually super cool. So, um, yeah, and that's gonna, what we're going to be working on today. And that's what we're going to be working on in like several future streams as well. Right. Uh, so I didn't really know how much time it will take to implement this kind of language, but uh, once we implement it, I think it will make a pretty cool video because I already have a couple of interesting examples of programs uh, that you can implement in this language. I only implemented them on a piece of uh, on a, uh, on a piece of paper. Uh, right. So essentially, I was literally interpreting programs written like that uh, with a pen and paper just to check if well, this entire idea kind of works and it kind of works uh right and you can implement a lot of complicated things in here for example it's very easy to implement a program that checks whether the parentheses are balanced if you for example um if you have a vocabulary of symbols that contain uh you know parentheses and stuff like that you may think that a turing machine is basically a, a turing tar pit right so have you guys heard about the turing tar pit turing tar pit so essentially, Turing Tarpit is a language that is technically Turing complete, that is technically Turing complete, but it's so like low level that it's practically useless. One of the examples of a Turing Tarpit is, for example, uh, brain fog. It is technically Turing complete, but it's useless in majority of the cases, right? It's not practical to even program in such language. And you may think that such language also going to be um, uh, Turing Tarpit. But because of this additional preprocessor, it actually makes it way, uh, way easier to implement complex program in it. So it doesn't really feel like a Turing tar pit anymore. So that's what's cool about it. That's what's cool about it. Uh, right. So and of course, I think it, it makes sense to actually put 
uh, all of these things in the description for people on YouTube, of course. All right, so this is a universal Turing machine, and this is a Turing tar pit, the notion of the Turing tar pit. So this is basically what we have. All right, so that's the plan for the day. That's the intro, my friend. That's the intro, my friend. Let's take a look at the subs. Who give me money? Who give me money? So thank you so much, Dot Chris one 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 for your subscription. Stay. Uh, thank you so much for uh, Twitch Prime with the message. Yes. Uh, yes, indeed. Uh, TCP st stream. Thank you so much for tier one with the message. Happy anniversary, Daddy Zoe. I'm not your dad. I'm not your dad. I did a DNA test. We're not related. But thank you so much for tier one subscription. Uh, hey, you here? Thank you so much for tier one with the message. Yo, Mr. Zozin, you rock. Uh, thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. Uh, all right. So let me sip my tea. I'm gonna, I suppose, start. Mm -mm -mm. And we're gonna be using Rust, by the way, to implement this. Into, I think, right? If you, if you, if you, if you're curious, like what kind of language we're gonna be using today, we're gonna be using Rust because it will make it easier for me to to manage shit, right? I don't feel like managing memory today in C for some reason. <laughs> Right, we'll see how it goes. So I was thinking how to call this language. Uh, I think I'm gonna literally call it uh, a Turing language. Right, so Turing uh, language. Right, so, and I'm gonna just take the first two letters of this thing and I'm gonna call it Tula. Uh, right, so I think I think it's a pretty good name for the, for, for the language Tula, Turing language. So an extension obviously is gonna be Tula. We'll see how it goes, we'll see how it goes. Uh, right, so, and by the way, uh, for this specific language, right, I used JavaScript highlighting <laughs> because it has all of these keywords, right? It's, it's, it's kind of convenient, right? So it has uh, like a for in case is basically a single rule, right? So let allows you to define uh, sets of symbols and stuff like that. So uh, yeah. Tula is dick in some variants of Spanish. That makes it even better. Now I'm 100% sure that it's going to uh, be called Tula. Um, which is freaking funny because Tula is also a Russian city, isn't it? Oh, yeah, it is. Yeah, of course. Okay, it's Spanish people, Spanish-speaking uh, Spanish people. Did you guys know that in Russia there is a city literally called Tula? Yes, look it up. Google it up. There is such city. <laughs> You're welcome. <laughs> <laughs> You're fucking welcome. Cheers. Mm -hmm. uh, the Dick City. The Dick City. Mm -hmm. Not in Argentina, but I know in other countries it's Dick, yes. Oh, it's, it's one of these sort of like a dialects, if I understand correctly. Um, so, yeah. Uh, let's go, I suppose. We're going to call it Tula or S. And uh, so let's create an entry point. How about that? Look at that. Look at that entry point. Are you impressed by my entry point to the program? So I'm gonna be Rust C main actually Tula R S. Fuck! Freaking M script and fucked me up yet again. So <laughs> this kind of shit. Okay, so I, I do have Rust C in here, but I don't have it in Emacs, and that happened after I installed mscripten some freaking time ago and I only used mscripten once just to check something and I don't use it anymore and it just fucked up permanently my environment in this specific account. Thank you so much mscripten. That's why I don't like it by the way. That's, that's literally why I don't like it because shit like that happens. So that's the, the price way, what, that you pay with overcomplicated software, right? So because like nobody fucking knows how it works and what it's doing, it can fuck up something in the environment. Nobody knows why, because it's that complicated. Anyways, so uh, let's go here, uh, right? So, and maybe what I wanna do, I wanna actually restart my Emacs from this specific environment where I do in fact have the Rust compiler. So uh, let me let me try to do this kind of thing. Rust C Tula R S R S. It's compiling. It's cooking. Okay, so it cooked finally. So now we should be able to run Tula, and it says "Hello World." 
isn't it a poggers mind it won't be isn't it a poggers so uh let's go ahead and maybe you know load some files right so i don't really remember how to load files can i do something like rust up maybe even rust up doc uh like so will you open um chromium for me hopefully so it's taking some time mm -mm -mm. I suppose it's not going to open Chromium for me. All right. Uh, so as far, as far as I know, um, something is permanently broken. Uh, Rust up door help. Do you have a path? Oh, okay. So th there is a flag. I do remember that there is a flag to print the path to documentation. So you can actually do path. And it just gives you the full path to documentation locally and you can just open it up in here there we go easy peasy lemon fucking squeezy let's go uh so let's just open it up there we go so uh let me find uh fs read i think it was a read to string if i'm not mistaken yeah, yeah, yeah it was read to string this is precisely function that we need in here that's pretty poggers smiley throwing there uh so let's actually introduce something like um source path so what's going to be our source path so this is a main tool let's actually call it ink tool uh right and we're going to try to maybe load this specific uh, source code and see how it goes. Um, all right, so this is going to be ink Tula. Uh, and then, um, so we need to use fs, fs read to string is going to be source path. And obviously this entire thing returns results. So I usually like to handle the errors like right away, like so. And the way I handle them, it's just like I print the error, like so. Uh, error uh, could not read file source path because of this stupid reason. And after that, I like to just do it like that. So, and in here, uh, what I have to do, I have to just like return the result, which returns nothing essentially. So that's what we're gonna have in here. To be fair, um, I would like to maybe even have like a, my own custom result uh, right, so it accepts the value, but it doesn't have an error. I already explained why I like to uh, handle errors like that. So I think I'm not going to go into the explanation yet again. So this is going to be something like this. And then here at the bottom, we're going to say something like this. All right. So let's try to rebuild this entire thing. Tula RS. I'm not using cargo yet uh, because I don't feel like it's justified right now because I don't plan to use any dependencies in here, honestly. Right. When I'm doing like a Rust project that doesn't have any dependencies, I just simply do not use cargo like at all. Like what's the point of using it if I don't have any dependencies? Uh, unless I want to publish it on, uh, on crates. Uh, but I mean, no, I don't want to publish it on crates. <laughs> Uh, it's just like, I mean, it's just like a single file. You can download it and build it yourself. It's just that simple. Let's not overcomplicate things, okay? We already have enough overcomplicated shit in software development. Let's not overcomplicate things. Uh, so, uh, yes, yeah, so cargo run instead of two commands. One command. Do you even bash, my friend? Looks like you don't bash. Looks like you don't bash. One command. Easy peasy, lemon fucking squeeze. Anyways, so um, let's actually do the source, right? So, and let's just go ahead and try to print this entire thing and see how it goes. So this is gonna be the source, the source. One command yet again. Uh, and there we go, so we actually print the source. So the next thing I wanna do, I wanna actually split this shit by space. I don't remember how to do that. So split, uh, do you have split anywhere? So you have, uh, okay, so there's a slice split. Maybe I should have actually used str split. Uh, can I switch to the search, please? Thank you so much. Uh, str split. Str split. Str split. Come on, you can you can do it. So and you just use the pattern. Okay, so we can just split everything by space because I mean, who needs a proper lexer? Am I right? Who needs a proper lexer? So uh, let's do the split and I'm going to split everything by the space and let's just call it uh, tokens. I don't freaking know. Uh, and let's print those tokens uh, and see how they look like. Do they look nice? Do they look Gucci? Do they look Tamaguchi? 
Um, <laughs> okay. <laughs> freaking, freaking rust. The killer of C, by the way. Uh, okay, so, um, yep. Yeah, there we go. So now we have. Hola, senor Tordin. Hola, amigo. Did they did they say it correctly? Is it amigo? Like I don't really speak Spanish or like in fact Latin languages at all. So I'm not kind of a century, So I apologize in advance. Um, <clears throat> I kind of want to learn like one of the Latin languages, either Spanish or or Portuguese. Amigo. Mm -hmm. I think Spanish would make sense actually, right? Because there is more probably more speakers in Spanish. Um, right. And if you understand Spanish, I suppose you kinda understand Portuguese as well. Uh, so yeah. Implemented Lexa in Rust, thank you for watching. See you next time. Exactly. That's what we did here. <laughs> okay, can I split by some sort of like um um I, I don't know, okay, can I actually say like the things? Ooh, this one is cool, actually. Look at that. So I can provide uh, a slice where I enumerate the things by which I want to split things. So that means I should be able to split by uh, these things as well. Uh, it didn't really work properly. It didn't really like it. So what you don't like? Uh, oh, it, it expects the, the characters, I suppose. Right, so that's the thing. Not the strings, but rather the characters. Okay. Let's go ahead. And as you can see, we did it. We actually did it. Actually did it. Isn't that cool? I think that's pretty cool. So this is the tokens. And essentially, one of the things I want to be able to do, I want to be able to kind of like consume the tokens, uh, like one by one. Uh, so that means I want to be able to pop them out of this entire thing. And I wonder how easily I can do that. So let's actually call this thing Lexa. And can I say, uh, so this thing is going to be obviously mutable because I want to be able to reassign this entire stuff in here. Um, right. What is this type? Can I say that this is str? Is that something I can say? It is in fact str. Okay, so we're going to say that the Lexa is actually the slice of strs. And I'm going to just take a pointer to the tokens. Right. So I'm going to just take the pointer to the tokens. So now here's an interesting thing. If I want to consume like a first, uh, first thing, so sort of like a head, let's call it head. Uh, I can do it like that, right? So this is basically the first token that I've gotten here. So, and as you can see, it is in fact increment, but then I want to kind of remove that. I want to pop it from the left. I think one way I can do that is by doing something like this, right? So basically I'm just like taking the tail of this entire thing and then I'm reassigning it again. And I suppose that's the easiest way to approach this entire thing. So let's actually see. Uh, I can try to print Lexa and then print it after I pop the element out of it. And it didn't even freaking compile because I suppose what I have to do in here, I have to do something like this. Uh, and here I also have to just take it like that. Uh, okay, so that works. So essentially I, I'm able to pop from the left. So that's pretty cool. I'm able to actually pop it from the left. That's pretty cool. Um, so we could have actually turned it. Yeah, so that's a very interesting idea. Just like turn it into an iterator. Um, right. And we could turn it into an iterator at this specific level. Right. So because that is already an iterator. So and we can just call it Alexa uh, and just let it infer its own type. So why not? Um, why not? Why not? Why not? Anyways, so um, let me see. We need to introduce a notion of the command, right? Or maybe the case. So according to the syntax, by the way, that I made up, uh, I want to call the rules cases because it will make it easier for me to use JavaScript highlighting for this language. <laughs> right. <laughs> like this is literally the reason why I picked this specific word. For, to denote a one single rule of the language is because like overall all of these keywords make it easy for me to use just javascript highlighting for this language <laughs> uh... mm -mm. so yeah anyway um yeah and i want to have some sort of a like a word that denotes the the rule because i, th I think it's kind of nice to have something uh right Mm -mm. 
OMG, case makes no sense. How does it not make any sense? So you, it's a row in this stable, uh, stable. It's like first case, the second case. It's like it's a case. It's like a switch case. And, and the way we're going to be interpreting this program is, by the way, uh, we are in a particular state. We're in a particular state and we're reading a particular uh, cell. We're going to be just iterating through each and individual rule and checking. D does it fit here? doesn't fit here. Next one. Does it fit here? It doesn't fit here. Next one. Does it fit here? Oh, this one fits. We do the right, we move the head and stuff like that, and we're repeating it again. So because of that, by the way, the rules, the order of rules will matter, right, because of that. So you, you'll have to be aware of this kind of stuff. And so since it acts like a switch case, why not just call it case in that case? Why not just call it case in that case? You know what I'm talking about? You know what I'm talking about? You know what I'm fucking talking about? I know you know what I'm talking about. Anyways, so um, let's introduce um, some sort of, I don't know, struct, maybe enumeration, maybe struct. I haven't decided yet. Um, but we're going to have... Yeah, we'll see. So we're going to call it case, uh, right? And a case is going to have... <sighs> the state, right, so obviously it's going to have a state, uh, and I suppose it's going to be some sort of a symbol, right, so we don't really know what that symbol is going to be, um, right, so it's going to be str from the lexa, right, so it's going to be str from the lexa, um, so because of that, maybe, maybe it makes sense to actually introduce some sort of a symbol like this, mm -hmm. so... This can be symbol. Uh, this is going to be sort of like a name of the symbol, which is going to be str. And it would be nice to have some sort of a location within the source code, but our lexer is actually kind of dumb for this kind of stuff, so I don't think it makes sense. Anyways, so the next thing we're going to have is a read, what we're reading from the tape. Then we're going to have a write, what we're writing into the tape. And then the step. And the step is obviously going to be an enumeration, right? So uh, and num uh, step and we're gonna have left and right like so so and the last thing is gonna be next which is also gonna be a symbol there we go uh, so and this is basically the cases that we have in here that's basically the cases that we have in here and what I want to do in here I want to introduce a function that parses the case, parse the case, and it's going to accept Alexa, and Alexa is going to be an iterator. In fact, maybe it makes sense for me to introduce like a separate type Alexa, and obviously this thing is going to be mutable because we're mutating it and stuff like that. Obviously, obviously, obviously. Uh, right, so let's say it's going to be iterator and the item of the iterator is going to be str. So that's basically it. And I suppose I can just say that it's an implementation. Can I say something like that? So iterator is a trait, so I have a feeling that I won't be able to say it like that. So that, that kind of that kind of worries me. But let's actually let it do the thing. Let's just let it do the thing. And maybe if it doesn't work, we, we're going to change it. So this is going to be to do. So let's try to build this entire thing and see what it's complaining about. Obviously, freaking obviously. Right. Do I go with all... Yeah, freaking... Okay. And because of that, all right, because of that, in like everywhere in here where I'm using the symbol, I also have to propagate this lifetime. Thank you, Rust. Very cool. Thank you. Right. This is what NSA wants you to program in. The, like, this is literally what NSA wants you to program in. They think it's a good idea. They think it's a good idea. Um, would you make it static? Maybe. <laughs> uh, right. NSA. So it's a DIN. Uh, so it's still complete. Oh, yeah, because freaking. Uh, yeah. Let's go. Uh, so expected lifetime. All right, so can I just say fuck you, Leatherman, and don't deal with the lifetimes today? I really don't want to deal with them, honestly. Um, can I just do A and yeah, there we go. So it seems to be working. It seems to be working. And uh, okay, 
let me let me see so the problem with this lexer is that you can't really pick into that lexer unless uh, unless there is something in an iterator is there something in an iterator i don't really know so this is going to be the case uh, this is going to be the case and uh, you know what uh, let's do it something like this let case uh, parse case we provide the lexa and obviously we also do this kind of thing right so i would expect parse case to actually report any potential errors that it has in here and uh, let's go and just print this entire thing like so so this is going to be the case and obviously we want to print it as the debug and it's not going to compile uh, because there is no debug scheisse for this thing. Yeah, there is no debug scheisse. So we have to do, we have to do derive, uh, derive debug. And also for this thing, we have to do it for the, for the symbol and for the step. There we go. Are you ready? Okay, so this one is not used. Nobody cares. This one is not mutable. Let's make it mutable. Boom. Is it working? It is in fact working. So this thing is not implemented yet. Perfect. Okay, so how do we parse a case? Parse a case. So essentially, the first thing we need to do is to uh, maybe, you know what? I'm gonna like not have a case keyword yet. We're gonna add it a little bit later, right? So we're gonna add it a little bit later. So the first thing I wanna do, I wanna actually have like a like a symbol, uh, a specific symbol. So um, let me let me see. It would be kind of nice, if you know what I mean, to have a function that allows me to say uh, parse symbol, believe it or not, <laughs> right? We accept this thing, right? We accept this thing, or we accept uh, this kind of stuff. I, I think there was a way to like not provide this kind of stuff, right? So there, there was some like elision rules or whatever where i could just say something like this but i feel like i'm using that incorrectly i think this is this is not how we do that yeah so it's probably not going to work and in this case maybe it doesn't even matter that much so whatever fuck it uh right so i want to have this kind of function right so this is going to be a symbol right and essentially in here what it's going to do is going to just check whether you have the next thing th there or not right so it's going to just check that so we can do lexa next and next actually returns like option right so we can check if let some um text right you've got some text and then uh so what we're doing here we just return okay symbol uh text right so if i'm not mistaken symbol does in fact have oh it's called name so okay so let's just call it name then to make it easier to construct things like that so otherwise it is going to return error right but we're also going to print an error saying that expect symbol but to reach the end of the input or something like that right expected uh symbol but reached the end of the input there we go it would be also nice to say where exactly we reached the end of the input but our lexa lexa literally a split command doesn't track the position of the token so we can't really do that uh, and i'm too lazy to implement it properly right now so fuck that fuck that so the reason why i'm doing it like that chat is because now i can do things like this state parse uh symbol lexa like this then what's going to be the next thing read write step step is slightly different by the way so maybe for step we're going to have a separate thing like that and then uh next also symbol and after that i can just do okay case and just list all these things in here read write step next can your c do that look at that beautiful code <laughs> it's kind of cool that uh, with this like a question mark thing it makes it super easy to write parses like that especially recursive descent parses so yeah that's pretty cool uh right and if at any point in here an error has happened it's gonna just like basically short circuit the entire thing so yeah anyway so we're gonna have we're gonna have like a pass step uh right so in the parse step so the step is probably the only thing that requires a very specific set of symbols either left or right in here as you can see so if for this state read write and next you can pretty much put whatever the fuck you want for the step you need to have an arrow 
right so you need to have an error because of that you need a separate thing that checks that you provided the thing correctly so anyway uh so we're going to have a parse step so in here we're going to accept this entire thing and we're going to return maybe a, a step uh, like so and the first thing we want to do we kind of want to even parse the symbol honestly right so this is going to be the name and we're going to just parse this symbol uh, like so this is going to be the like so there we go and the next thing we have to do we have to check if it is a correct symbol if it's one of the correct symbols how can we do that chat so we can just maybe match this entire thing so uh, this is a symbol right so it's going to be uh, let's call it symbol so symbol uh, name and it's a slice so that means we should be able to do shit like that if it's left uh, what we're doing we're returning okay step uh, left right if it is right it's okay right and if it's something else we have an opportunity uh, to report an error like that so we're gonna say um, so error expected uh, this or this but got um, I don't know let's call this maybe name and here we can put name and then we're going to just return uh, an error in this specific case right so we're going to just return an error and there we go we we'll parse this step so that's pretty cool i think that's pretty cool so we we, get, we got the parser we basically got a pretty cool parser that we can extend and stuff like that so let's try to compile this entire thing and it doesn't even fucking compile anyway so what's wrong in here so there's something about the is that because I have to provide the lifetime in here as well? Apparently, apparently that's the case as well, right? So, um, so parse this step, parse this step. So I don't think, uh, so in the case also need to have this kind of shit too. There we go. Yeah, and we managed to construct this. So there we go. Look at that. So you've got a case where you have a symbol inc then sim, uh, symbol zero as read uh, symbol one as right step left right and next and then next symbol and stuff like that so that's pretty cool uh right so that's pretty epic i think so how do you align the uh, the rules can i just put like underscore in here will it work uh, so explicit lifetimes required okay so maybe maybe in here i don't have to do it no everywhere explicit lifetime required so this is what i don't really like about lifetimes it's because it's just like if you want to introduce them it makes it so goddamn difficult it's almost like they're explicitly discouraging you to use them it's almost like they explicitly don't want you to use them so make it as difficult as possible but maybe that's the point maybe that's the point Mm -mm. so we get some subs and bits and subs and bits and subs and bits and subs and bits um thank you so much ice leo for twitch fans exhibition uh great lifetime lol thank you thank you <laughs> turing complete thank you so much for 200 bits with the message hey the video was fun thanks you're welcome you're welcome you're welcome i'm really glad that people enjoyed it uh, it was also super fun to make and I want to make more of such videos where I just like spend some time on developing some projects. So like the more time I spend preparing for the video, the, the higher quality it becomes, right? So because I'm basically what I'm doing right now, I'm sort of like researching uh, for the video, right? So I'm basically researching for the video. And the more research you do, the higher quality is um, for in the video. Mm -hmm. So yeah. Yes, yes, yes. I think that's a very good direction for me to move to in terms of uh, creating the content. Right. <clears throat> so, yes, yes, yes. So, we get this kind of thing. But the question is okay, so we managed to parse only one case. Uh, we, we can parse the second one, but how do we parse like all of them? Is there an easy way for us to do that? Um, so we want to be able to check whether we reach the end of the iterator before we call parse case, right? So we want to be able to do that at least. So uh, let me, let me see. I'm going to go in here and just see what iterator actually offers to us. Does it even offer anything interesting for us? So this is a trait. 
What kind of things do you have? Uh, it only has next uh, provided methods advanced by uh, so CMP cloned mm -mm, last mm -mm, mm -mm. so there's a, another thing pickable. Ooh, this is actually super cool because yeah, that's what I want to be able to do. I want to be able to peek into the uh, into the iterator, and I kind of remember this kind of thing. So there is an iterator peekable, peekable, peekable. <laughs> uh, right, and it allows you just like peek into the next one. Uh, right. So I wonder if I can easy just do something like peekable, peekable, uh, peekable. Okay. So there's a compile it seems to be compiled so it's pretty cool so which enables me to do the following thing um i can do the lexa peak um so what other methods does it have uh next oh this is even conditional shit that's so fucking cool uh right but we want to do peak returns a reference yeah so while peak uh is some right if you if you still have something in there uh, we keep parsing the case and I suppose it would be nice to maybe have some sort of cases in here, right? So let's mute cases, which is going to be a vector like so uh, and then we just push those cases in here might as well just put it like that uh -huh. and So that essentially means that we managed to parse all of the cases uh, did we manage to parse all the cases? Almost. Expect a symbol but reach the end of the input. That's bizarre, my friend. Eh? Like, what the fuck? Um, I can't, like... You're supposed to stop at the end of this thing. You're supposed to actually stop. Um, you know what? You know what? I think I want to take a look at some of them. Some of the stuff in here. Can I collect this entire thing? into a vector so this is going to be tokens which is a vector obviously right so vstrs and let me just look into that like let, let me just peek into this entire shit so does it contain some weird ass shit no it doesn't actually oh it does contain some weird ass shit look at that especially if we're going to have some shit like that okay 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 i see what's going on so if you have something like this this is a a known yeah okay uh so what i'm thinking is that maybe what we have to do we have to actually filter this entire shit so we're going to take the the token right so and we're going to only take the token the length which is uh, greater than zero or something like that so that's a good idea i think that's it and there we go so that actually fixed the situation look at that look at that uh, right. So to be fair, we want to have like a proper Lexa in here. We really want to have a proper Lexa, uh, but I don't feel like implementing it right now. I can implement it a little bit later. There we go. So we, we actually got all the cases. So this is like a Lexa placeholder, right? Uh, Lexa placeholder. Uh, another, <laughs> another Lexa problem. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but it, just, so Lexa is such a deceiving problem. Right, so Lex is such a deceiving problem. You may think that it's super easy to implement. You start implementing it and you're wasting like two hours implementing just Lexa. Uh, right, because of that, I'm not even going into implementing Lexa. Right, it's just like implement it split and there you go. I already parsed the, the entire thing that I needed. Right, so I can then implement Lexa later. Right, so it doesn't really matter. I implemented Lexa so many freaking times. Maybe I'm gonna just steal the Lexa from one of my projects. Maybe from my previous language, by the way, but okay, so I could use the, <laughs> this is so funny, by the way, I can use Alexa from my previous language, which is a Russian programming language, but the problem is with this, with this Alexa, <laughs> there's a little bit of a problem with this Alexa, don't you think? <laughs> so I could use that, but I mean, it's just like, a, probably... Um, anyways, um, so because <laughs> I already have Alexa implemented in uh, oh, I could probably steal something from Bada, yeah, that's right. Uh, I can probably steal something from Bada. Do I have a Bada Beam Bada Boom uh, in code? Where is the Alexa? I don't wait, I don't have Alexa in here. What the fuck? How does it even work? 
Uh, I don't know, whatever. So let's actually continue. Um, it doesn't really matter that much. We already parsed all of the cases and stuff. So uh, the next thing we need to do, we need to probably introduce some sort of a machine, right? So because machine um, essentially um, is the state, right? So the, the state itself. So, and it's going to have some sort of a state. Uh, so this is going to be a symbol, uh, right? So NSA, uh, and this is NSA. Uh, so, and we're going to be referring to one of the symbols in the cases, right? So we're going to be assigning them. That's why there is a lifetime in here. So it has a state. Um, it's also going to have some sort of a tape, uh, which I suppose is going to be a vector also of symbols, right? It's going to be a vector of symbols uh, because we're going to be checking against the symbols and stuff like that. And uh, we're also going to have a head, uh, which points at one of these symbols here in the tape. So, yeah, mm, let's maybe create uh, some sort of a machine. So the question is going to be uh, how we're going to approach all of that stuff. Um, mm -mm. Uh, the problem with the symbol, by the way, the problem is the symbol is that it's kind of difficult to construct or is it? Is it actually difficult to construct? Uh, so, oh, we've got some subs. Thank you so much, Black Haze, uh, for Twitch Pounds like Richard with the message 12 months learning React at Poggers. I'm really glad that you learned React. Uh, right. Mm -hmm. Uh, mm, 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 mm. Okay, mm, so let me let me see. So I think it's not that difficult to construct if you ask me, because now what I can do, I can do machine, and it's probably can make a mutable machine. So this is the machine. So the initial state of the machine is going to be maybe something like. Uh, ink, right? So, what's the? Yeah, we're gonna take this state, and that's gonna be the initial state. Actually, like having symbol referred to slice of the string was a pretty cool idea because it allows me to just initialize it like that, which is kind of cool, honestly. Uh, which is kind of cool. So the next thing is going to be a tape, right? So let's actually say that it's gonna be a vector, and so let's just initialize things with like zero. Uh, let's put a bunch of zeros in there. Uh, so that's going to be our tape in here. So it's a bunch of zeros and one at the end, right? So it's going to be one at the end. So in the head is going to be, I suppose, at zero. Uh, right, and there we go. We've got a machine. Um, let's try to maybe print that machine just to see what's going on in here. Right, so what we'll get. Uh, so machine is not particularly printable. So let's make it printable, I suppose. I'm going to go here. I'm going to bring this thing in here and that will make this thing printable. Boom! Machine is in fact printable. Okay, so what we want to do, we want to iterate each individual case and just see if it fits anything, right? Just see if it fits anything. Okay, uh, so we can just go ahead for case in cases, for case in cases, if case state equal to uh, machine state, uh, right, and mm, maybe, right, I want to actually separate that, case read equal machine tape machine head, uh, then what we're gonna do, we're gonna take machine tape head, put a write into this thing, then, depending on what kind of step we have in here, so we'll have to match the step, right? We have to match the step. Um, <clears throat> so, step left is going to be machine head minus one, which can underflow, right? And I suppose maybe this is something that we can actually kind of check. So we can take machine head and if it's equal to zero, we probably want to print some sort of an error, right? Error, um, right? Tape, 
and the flow. So it's supposed to be actually infinite, by the way. So tape is supposed to be infinite and we can make it infinite, but in the right direction. In the left direction, uh, I don't want to deal with that, honestly. <laughs> I'm sorry. <laughs> I don't want to make it infinite in the left direction. I want to make it only infinite in the right direction. It just makes it easier. So, And it's still infinite, by the way. So it's still going to be infinite, but only like... It's a half of the infinity. Half of the infinity is still infinity, okay? So everything's fine. <laughs> Everything's fine. So we're cutting corners. Uh, so this is going to be the right. And here we just do machine head plus one. Okay. So maybe it would make sense to kind of factor out all of that uh, somehow. Right. So factor that. But I, I don't know. Okay. So we move to in a particular case. So then we take the machine state and we're assigning the case next. And that's basically handling a single case and after that we want to break out of that thing uh, right so I didn't want to uh, like merge these two cases but maybe it does make sense to merge them it's just like I don't like that this thing is too goddamn long uh, but maybe that's fine I don't freaking know um, right so that's basically matching a single like iteration so this is a single iteration of the Turing machine right just a single iteration of a Turing machine so, uh, and essentially, what we have to do, we have to do that in a loop, right? So, there we go. Not even in the loop, honestly, but rather while machine is not halted, right? So, it's not halted. So, we need to maybe introduce the notion of a halt to the machine. Uh -huh. Something like this. And initially, obviously, halt is going to be false uh, is going to be false and when we're gonna halt I think we are going to halt when we checked all of the cases and we didn't find anything we didn't find anything so the thing we can do we can basically mark machine as halt then as we iterate and find the case we just mark it as not halting false and so that means if we iterate all of the cases and we didn't find anything it's going to stay halted and this entire thing will terminate essential you know what i mean you know what i mean i think you know what i mean all right so and it would be nice to maybe also on each iteration sort of like print uh the state of the tape and stuff like that right so it, can, it would be kind of nice to do that uh right so let's see what we can do. So we can iterate uh, the symbol in the machine tape, right? So, and then essentially what we can do, we can just print this entire shy uh, So this is gonna be just the, the name, uh, right? So maybe I'm gonna zoom in, uh, maybe put a little bit of a space. This is gonna be symbol name. Um, yeah, and there we go. So, and after that, we're going to just do print LM. So, it would be also nice to maybe uh, print the head where the head is located, but the symbols have difference. I think I remember solving that a long time ago because I already tried to implement this language in the past, and I think I had a pretty cool idea on how to do this kind of shit. Uh, right. So, anyway, uh, let's actually see what is going on in here. Okay, so there's some symbols. Ah, so symbols are not comparable. Maybe we should make them comparable, chat. Can I just, like, slap a partial EQ on this big and just say it's now comparable? Um, right, so I can't risk. It has a symbol which is not copied. But I'm not trying to copy. But I want to allow copying. Okay. So, yeah, can you just, like copy but i mean bruh can you just reassign the name because it's just like yeah it's 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 a problem of just assigning the name uh right and apparent apparently it is just a problem of assigning the name okay whatever tape on the floor nice <laughs> so it went haywire but maybe this is because we fucked up something well it's not supposed to underflow honestly uh, if anything is supposed to overflow, if you ask me, uh, right, so it's supposed to actually underflow. Uh, right. You know what? I'm already streaming for one freaking mother flipping hour. So I think the time has come, chat, to make a small break and refill the cup of tea. What do you guys think? Sounds good? Sounds good? You? Sounds to my good? You? Let's go. So, uh, let's go ahead and finish this entire thing. So what I want you to do in here, um, 
yeah i wanted to troubleshoot like what the fuck <laughs> honestly <laughs> why did it um yeah underflow or something like that that's that's kind of weird uh right so maybe i just parsed it incorrectly right if i try to run it uh it didn't even print anything i would expect it to at least print some things so that means it didn't manage to even print anything so it literally fails somewhere here so maybe we did a fucky wacky with the parse step yeah <laughs> uh, <laughs> okay um, <clears throat> all right that explains it let's go okay and uh yeah that's that's pretty funny uh so we never actually printed the initial state of the machine so maybe it would make sense to introduce some uh methods for the machine so where is this okay so let's implement machine and the most annoying thing about the um lifetimes is that if the structure has a lifetime you not only have to like repeat it here you have to repeat it in implementation fucking twice who designed this thing like what the fuck is wrong with you the person who designed this thing like why oh you you can just do it like that then okay thank, thank you so much <laughs> okay so they, they realize their mistakes they realize that because that's like fucking outrageous honestly the fact that you had to like repeat it twice is freaking outrageous anyways um so what i want you to do here maybe something like a print um right and let's move this entire stuff in there uh right because i think printing this state is going to become relatively complicated right so we're going to have more things in here for sure for sure for sure um so in here we're gonna accept self uh like this and uh, that's basically basically self isn't it yeah it is self um okay good. so here after we did the case i can do machine uh print i just printed the machine um and i suppose it makes sense to print the state of the machine one time before going into interpretation and stuff like that mm -mm maybe um it makes sense to tuck this entire thing behind some sort of like a machine next cases and just like do something like that that sounds like a pretty cool idea honestly right so we can do next like so and just copy paste this in here and there you go that's pretty poggers so here we're gonna accept self but mutable and also we're gonna accept the cases right but uh we can accept them as the slice a slice of the cases can i can i just do something like that i should be able to do something like that i'm pretty sure i can do some of the stuff like that there we go so and this is basically the slice of the cases so this thing can return error uh i suppose uh we should return the result like this so and that means uh this thing can obviously fail right so it obviously can fail uh, let's try to recompile this entire thing and go to the compilation errors so yeah okay here i will have to query replace machine with self boom 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 i want you in my room to spend the night okay so that seems to be cool all right so what's the last thing we also have to put okay in here indicating that everything is okay so we tucked this thing away uh what else do we have in here so self state um lifetime may not live long enough fuck you leatherman fuck you so i suppose it would be kind of can i just say that just use the same lifetime for all of that shit can, can i say something like that or is that not possible within the current model of uh, it is possible look at that so yeah that worked out that actually worked out so uh, so are you according to machine interpreter basically right so but we're also going to implement a language on top of the turing machine interpreter and that's what will make this freaking uh thing cool right so you'll see we'll see <clears throat> let me let me see now uh when i'm printing the machine 
Uh, I also want to print this state. I think it's kind of important to print the state. So let's actually do something like uh, state. Right, so this is going to be the state. Uh, and we can say that the state is self state name or something like that. So let's actually go. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. So there we go. Uh, no, 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 no. What the fuck is this shy semi This is not what I wanted. I wanted to actually maybe print it somewhere here, like so. So then mm, 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 I can move this state thingy to here. Uh huh. Uh -huh. So something expansion you didn't like. What you didn't like, I don't quite understand. Is that because, uh, mm -hmm. and even provided like a w really weird caused by macro expansion, macro expansion. What the fuck? Wait, am I am I blind? Um. It's outside FN. Ah, okay. So I, I am blind. <laughs> okay, that's cool. Everything's fine. Everything's fine. Everyone calm down. I, I know what I'm doing. A professional software developer. So anyway, um, I want to also print the head some, somewhere here. But the problem is that the name of the state can vary and even the symbols can vary. Very much. Very much. So also, I don't want to print this thing. I don't think it's it's actually useful. So let's not print this machine. Um, right. So how can we do that? I think it makes sense to actually keep track of the size of this entire thing. So maybe uh, we can um, have something like this. I'm going to have a mutable buffer, which is a string. All right. Can I actually write into the buffer like so? Is that a thing I can do? That would be actually kind of awesome. Right, just write into the buffer and then print a land the buffer. Uh, right, so we're just like accumulating things into the buffer. Uh, it didn't really work well, but this is primarily because uh, I did something wrong. Yeah, so it has to be std fmt write. So let's actually use std fmt write. Uh, all right, so what else do we have in here? So this thing does not need to be mutable. Ah. I mean, I never actually uh, passed it as a mutable thing. So that's kind of the problem in here. Are you good? Are we Gucci? Yes, we are freaking Tamaguchi. So result is unused, blah, blah, blah. Can I just say easily that I don't give a shit about it? <laughs> Can I just do something like this? Uh, right, or maybe, uh, yeah. I think I should be able to do like because in this case, like I'm writing into a string. There's nothing to fail in here. Like, come on, what what can fail? Uh, memory allocation, and if memory allocation fails on a modern machine, that's pretty much like a insta death, right? You have to panic anyway. So there's nothing to fail in here. Honestly, there's nothing to fail. So um, what we want to do? Uh, we want to know if we're currently looking at a symbol that is also a head, right? So what I'm thinking is. Um, we need to enumerate, All right? We need to enumerate, and that gives us uh, gives us a pair, which is an index and the symbol, if I'm not mistaken. So if i is equal to the self head, right? So self head, we need to save it as the head position. Actually, uh, what we have to do, uh, so we can do head zero and essentially it's a head position within the um within the string right that's what it is right? it's within the string so i'm gonna do something like this so because it may vary right so we have to do it like that uh and afterwards after we printed this entire thing we can just print this thing head amount of times or something like that uh, i'm pretty sure you can just use print ln magic to do that but i don't remember how to do it so uh because of that i'm going to do it like that but then i can probably do that uh, a little bit later i just want to see if it works or not right so i just want to see if it works or not. Um, um so to do use the field width formatting magic or something like or something 
uh, something like that. I know that print can do it. I don't remember how to do it. So uh, I can do that a little bit later. So what do we have in here? So enumerate. So I suppose I have to iterate this entire thing. Uh, what else do we have in here? This thing has to be mutable. Sure. Fair enough. Uh, yep. So in the thing I want to do in here, in the thing I want to do in here, I want to just put something like this in here. So now, as you can see, head points at nothing, which is kind of weird because it doesn't have to be I per se, honestly. It have to be actually the buffer length. That's what it has to be. It has to be buffer length. There we go. So we can clearly see now. Uh, so we had ink. Then we increment it, uh, change it to one, move to the right, and then we halt it, and this is the final result. Right. So this is initial thing. We incremented it and we stopped. Now we can do something cool. What if our initial state, our initial state here is gonna be something like one one? It will have to go a little bit further. And it did. Look at that. So this was an initial state. Was it an initial? Yeah, it was an initial state. So since it was one, it replaced it with zero. Then another one, it replaced it with zero. It finally reached zero. It replaced it with one and it's halted. It's halted. And then it's repeated like this thing uh, one more time. It, like it kind of repeats the same thing several times. I'm not sure if it's a good idea to do it like that. Um, so the way we can prevent that, I suppose, is maybe by doing something like this. So that's a little bit better. So it will only print. Yeah, that, that's better. That's much better. Mm -mm. It's very cool. Very, very cool. Uh, so, yeah, but that's kind of bizarre, isn't it? Mm -hmm. mm. Do that. Uh -huh. Okay. Yeah, okay, okay, okay. Yeah. So everything's fine. I was just like double checking in my head why it works like that, and yeah, it makes sense. All right, so essentially, the uh, condition hold the machine is when you switch to the state that doesn't exist. Right. So that's basically the condition. If you switch to the state that doesn't exist, we just basically automatically hold. And that seems to be working. That seems to be working. That's some dark tea you've got. It's uh, crude oil from the depths of Siberia. Um, so, um, what's gonna be the next thing? So we can even try to, um, yeah, it would be nice to maybe accept the input from the command line arguments, if you know what I mean. And also the input for the symbols, for the, for the tape and stuff like that. Right, that would have been actually kind of cool. Um, so let me factor out the function that prints like uh, parses several cases. So we have a thing that parses uh, one case, but let's actually introduce something like parse cases, several of them. Uh, right, and obviously we're gonna accept uh, the Lexa, right, so this is gonna be the Lexa. Uh, and in here we're gonna just return, just return, um, I suppose the vector, so just a vector of case uh, A. A, 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 A. So, and let's factor out this entire thing like so, right? And we're gonna just return cases. Uh, and in here, what I can do, I can simply have cases, right? So parse cases uh, from the Lexa. I'm gonna take it as a mutable thing, uh, right? And then I'm gonna do it, just do it like that. Uh, okay, so on top of that, I wanna be able to maybe, um, parse the tape, but we'll see, we'll see how we can do that. Um, okay, so if I remember correctly, there was an environment args or something like that. Do you guys remember? So the environment args. Um, yeah, boy. Mm -hmm. So let's go ahead, use std environment, and then in main, we're going to have um, mute args and args and that is an iterator right it is an iterator so the first thing i want to do i want to probably take the program so it's going to be args next and i kind of want to unwrap it because the program should be always present uh so 
and we can do expect uh, program name is always present so and yeah that's basically what we have in here and now what i can do i can just check if um we have source path in here so args next um we just return source path as it is we can actually do something like this source path uh, and we don't really have to yeah so here is an interesting trick that you can do here's the, i wonder if it's going to work i think it is going to work so um you have a path notice how i don't put any mute in here did you guys notice that you guys notice that so i do source path and i assign path in here otherwise i'm going to print e print something like error no input is provided uh right i'm going to just return error like so will that compile i actually don't know i actually don't know so let's actually see if it's going to compile let me see uh, so there is a next in here method Ooh, yeah that's very interesting so this thing has to be specifically pickable yeah that makes sense sure i can do that so pickable is not fine because where it is located pickable uh-huh so it's eater pickable okay so use std eater pickable pickable and it's not even a trade it's not even a mother flipping trade fuck that is very bizarre can i so it's a struct okay so we can then just do it like that uh-huh and i suppose i can just do like that. that's that's bizarre so one thing is a trait another one is pickable is not it an iterator is not an iterator Ooh, the oh my god you jesus christ bro so i has to be an iterator so then i have to say that oh my god rust are you for real rust i can't believe that um so yeah i see so this is a cases expected reference but got uh-huh so cases uh-huh so because i have to parse several cases that makes sense uh-huh what else do we have in here mutable um lexer uh-huh so we don't have to do that so what else do we have in here so it's unused it's going to be used in the future don't worry about it my friend so and in here uh borrow move value borrowed okay so this is because i have to do something like this uh-huh anything yeah okay look at this type this is what nsa wants you to program in i'm not even fucking joking this is what nsa wants you to program in so Mm -hmm. do you like it do you like what you see do you like what you see so yeah uh why do rust function signature grow like a tumor <laughs> i don't fucking know i have a couple of hypotheses uh um anyways mm -hmm. but i mean you can simplify that you can simplify that so don't, don't worry about it you can always simplify that so um we're parsing that and that and that so the yeah so now if i try to run uh tula tula to 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 la it says no input is pro i really hate this kind of thing right i really hate this kind of thing because if you want to have like a custom error reporting and your main function return result um it is always going to print this like annoying little thing Right, you either use their custom error printing or you have to put up with like with this thing. Like you, you can't have your own error printing like that. Um, and as far as I know, this thing is like literally hard coded, if I'm not mistaken. Right. So it comes from the implementation of termination of uh, error. So here's the thing. Like, do you guys know like what you can put in the return of main? What you can put in the return of main? anything that imp uh, implements the interface termination i think that's called termination yeah it is called termination like anything that implements termination can be put as a return of main and there's a several things that implement termination for example uh exit code right result also implements 
termination. And if we take a look at the source code of implementation of the termination of result, um, right, that error error is literally had coded in there. Like it's it's here. Right, you, you can't like it's literally had coded in here. Like you can't even customize it or do anything like that. It's, it's always gonna be freaking there. Um, exclamation mark, my favorite type. As far as I know, exclamation mark is an reachable type. Right, so essentially things like, um, let me see, I think exit uh, returns an reachable type, yeah. So because it never returns out of it, right, so it never returns out of it and it's an reachable type. If you exit, it doesn't have any return. It's impossible for return, for, to return from this function. And the type system is actually aware of these kind of situations, right. So it's called never actually. Uh, it's a nightly only experimental API, damn. I remember this thing for quite some time. Maybe I need to update my uh, my Rust. Maybe it's just old, but I don't think it's experimental nightly. Uh, but yeah, so it's just nightly. Uh, uh -uh. So yeah, um, the way I circumvent that is basically I introduce a second thing in here. So uh, main, uh, and in here I just return an exit code, uh, and I just do match start. Uh, right, so in here I can do something like OK, uh, exit code, success, uh, success, and then error, failure. So I suppose I will also have to just do something like process. Exit code, exit code. All right, that's all we have. Uh, there we go. So we'll get rid of that. We'll get rid of that. So on top of that, we can probably print some usage as well. Who said we can't do that? We can do it. So let me uh, do usage program. I can finally use this program. Uh, and here we're going to have an input. I can even do something like Tula. There we go. Um, <clears throat> so yeah, so there we go. So I kind of like this, like a C style error reporting, if you know what I'm talking about, like a very simple C style error report. Uh, maybe I'm just like weird. Maybe I'm just small brained C developer who can't comprehend the genius of Rust. <laughs> you know, the classic. Uh... Goddamn small minded C developers ruining everything with their small brain. <clears throat> Uh, okay, so yet again, that's pretty cool. So another thing I want to do, I want to actually uh, accept also a thing called tape file. Um, only the developers can understand for us. <laughs> yeah, probably, uh, probably, probably, probably. Uh, so let me see. Um, so digits uh, tape, I'm going to call it a tape and let's say we're going to have something like zero, zero. Uh, zero, one, yeah, something like that. So we're gonna have this kind of thing. Uh, and essentially what I wanna do, um, I wanna do parse tape, um, and yeah, I wanna have a pick. <laughs> I can tag this type under like a alias or something like that. Like I understand that, but I wanna keep it as it is right now because it's fucking funny. Um, so, and in here we're gonna have a vector of symbols. Uh, right. <laughs> um, right. So in here we're gonna have uh, symbols. It's gonna be back to new. Might as well actually do something like that. I think that's a little bit shorter, but it doesn't really matter, honestly. Doesn't really matter. So while Alexa peak uh, is some. We're going to do um, symbols, uh, push, parse, symbol, and we already have that. Uh, and then we do OK, symbols. So now what I can do, by the way, I have cases and then I can have, uh, I suppose, tape, uh, parse tape. So that means I have to have two essentially symbols in here and the question is how we're going to be doing all that and I wonder um maybe it would make sense for us to introduce like a parse cases file where we could just provide the source path 
All right, and then parse key, uh, tapes file where we can also provide the tape path. So, and then we could say input and um, input tape. Uh huh. So that's pretty cool. So because of that, it probably makes sense to move the usage out uh, outside. So here we're gonna accept the problem. This is gonna be str. Uh, I'm going to take this entire stuff and put it in here. And here we're going to just do usage program. There we go. No input, let's say, Tula is provided. So this is the sort of path. Okay, so by the way, going back to that, uh, have you noticed that I'm assigning a uh, source path, but it's not mutable? Did you guys know about this feature? So when I first discovered this, like I was like, what the fuck is this shit? So you don't have to put the mutant here, right? So because it's the first initialization of the variable. Uh, all right, so that kind of works like that. It's kind of funny. So kind of like it. <clears throat> all right. So uh, let's do the other thing. So we're going to be have a tape path. Uh, we're going to probably do a similar thing. Let's do a similar thing, because why not? Kind of like it. Uh, so this is going to be tape path and then uh, no tape is provided. So and in here, all right, so this is how we construct Alexa. So this is a very important code because we're going to be using it in implementing parse case file. Uh, right. And that's about it actually. So let's go ahead and implement um, parse cases file which is going to accept this kind of thing and we're going to have a file path which is just an str but it's going to return this huge ass result huge ass result uh, yep so let me just take this thing parse cases file parse cases file <clears throat> all right so this is a file path um maybe i could call it source path actually so could not read file blah 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 and then we just do return parse cases um mutable lexin and then at the end we're going to drop it so parse tape file um you know what i, I think i'm going to copy paste this thing and put it in here so this is the tape file doing a similar thing who needs templates when you can copy paste shit am i right am i right fellow c++ developers hey, hell yeah uh, so this is going to be the tape um, and because of that maybe it makes sense to actually rename the source path to tape path like so and then and on the tape path what the fuck tula tula path the path right so because it's an extension it's actual extension to the path to 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 la. so and in here now by the way i can just straight up use tape like this so the question is going to be what's going to be the initial state though what's going to be the initial state um we can say that maybe the initial state of the machine has to be the first state uh, in a case like we've, we take the first case what's the state of the first case it's going to be the first state um all right so but we'll see we'll see so for, first let's actually go to the compilation errors and see how it's going to go right um obviously there are some compilation errors uh we don't really even have to do it like that right so it doesn't make sense um, but it's still complain a parse um parse symbols yeah and this has to be a symbol. There we go. Uh, parse symbols. Uh, where is? Wait, wait, wait. It's not. Um, what? Is, what was it called? Uh huh. Oh, I never actually implemented that thing. I see. Um, oh no, it's 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 there. It's parse tape. Okay. But there was something. Yeah, okay, so the result was not uh, compatible, so that's why. I see, I see. So the Tula, yeah, so all these are slices. Uh, let's fix that. Uh, parse cases cannot return local source. Um, 
so what's wrong in here it should be fine though oh i see what's going on okay so we cannot easily do it like that because the sources die way too freaking quickly yeah they should exist for a little bit longer honestly uh so this should exist for a little bit longer so what we can do we can maybe the idea of having these separate functions is not particularly great uh, right so maybe we could just put them in the scope of main function or uh, we can just leak them if you know what i mean we can just try to leak them but i'm not sure if it's a, uh, that requires boxing and stuff like that so it's easier to actually do it without it uh, so let me see uh, so this is a tape path so then we're gonna have a tula path so let me do something like a tula source and this is gonna be tula path so this is the tula path um though i wonder if i can move this shit out of this thing that's a, wait, wait wait this is a very interesting idea honestly what if we okay we return that stuff but on top of that we also return the source which is essentially a string so yeah mm, and that way you can kind of own it there you can kind of own it there uh but i mean yeah so it has to be essentially that that's kind of complicated but i want to try this idea honestly right because what case it has in here it refers to the things in a string right but what if we just move the string out of this thing so whoever called this thing like move the ownership to themselves is that a thing that is possible honestly is that a thing that is possible that's very freaking interesting uh right so i want to try that i want to try that so, so that's kind of cool um so uh let me let me freaking see so this is the cases right so and then this is going to be the cases and the source um uh, and now uh, it's going to be string like that so this is going to be a map uh and this is going to be whoa, what what would we have here it's just symbols uh right and the symbols uh source uh, let me see, let me see. So let's go through the competitioners. Uh, let's go through the competitioners and what does it say? Mismatch type. Yeah, yeah, yeah. so that's understandable. Um, so cases source, and let's just let it live for some time, right? So tape source, uh, right? We're not going to be using it, but I want it to exist, right? I, I just want it to exist. Uh -huh. So return of a reference to data owned by current function. So I suppose it's not going to work that easily. Okay, so that's fine actually. So we're gonna just use the plan B then. Uh, we're gonna just use the plan B that I wanted to do originally. Mm, might as well actually. So here's the Tula path. We may right away uh, have a Tula source, right? So this is gonna be Tula path. Uh -huh, it's gonna be Tula path uh, and so this is more like a tool Alexa, but I don't want it to exist for too long. So, but maybe, by the way, we can just do something like that. Freaking, freaking rust. That's why nobody likes the rust. Uh, right. So tool source, uh, uh -huh, uh -huh. so that's pretty cool. Um, and then right away, we can just like do the cases. All right, so let's just do the cases, uh, parse cases. Uh -huh. So and go parse tape file. All right, so let's just do it like that. So this is a tape path. This is gonna be tape source. Uh, it's gonna be tape path. Uh -huh, tape path let's take this entire thing uh -huh, like so and let's get rid of the map let's get rid of the map so in the right away we also have the tape in here and we're just parsing the tape cool 
Right, so there's a little bit of repetition here, but that's fine. That's totally fine. Uh, right. So let's get rid of those things. They're not really needed anymore. That's not a working model. Uh, that is not a working model. Uh, so let's go to the compilation errors. So uh, not found in the scope because it's a Tula source. That's cool. And this is the tape source. That's also cool. Uh, what else do we have in here? Um, yeah. So we have to... Mm -hmm. I see. I just copy pasted it incorrectly. Uh -huh. So that's totally fine. I'm going to put it like that. Uh -huh. What else do we have in here? Tape. Uh -huh. So this has to be question mark. And we're Gucci. We finally can Gucci. That's cool. So that's totally fine. That is totally fine. So let's provide the input for the increment, right? So, and we're also going to have something like digits tape and that worked as you can see. Um, right. Um, so maybe I'm going to call it something like even, right? So this is basically even, um, even bits. Right, so it's a number in bits that represent an even number. Also, the tape is supposed to be actually infinite, right? So the tape is supposed to be infinite. Uh, what's going to happen if you have something like this, right? And it's obviously should not be in even bits. I'm going to call it odd uh, bits tape. So this is odd bits, and let's just put a bunch of, of bits in here. So what's going to happen? Uh, so odd bits tape. Uh, and obviously, right, so we have an overflow of the tape and we can even see what the fuck is going on. So it's actually super cool. Uh, it's actually super cool. So we just went there and it went nowhere. So the way I want you to approach this entire thing is that basically we can make the tape infinite to the right, but the way we're going to make it infinite is that we're going to look at the last character and we're going to extend that last character to the infinity, right? So I suppose we can just take that at the um, at the parsing stage right so we parse to the tape and we look at the symbol right so we look at the last symbol and that's going to be the extension to the infinity so and the, the reason why i want to do that before i start evaluating the machine is that if i look at the last symbol while, while evaluating the machine it may change to something else right so for example you have a program that changes this thing to one and then goes to the right and because of that it's going to continue being once which is probably not something that you want when you wrote that specific tape file uh right that's definitely not what you wanted so let me let me see how we're going to approach this entire thing how we're going to approach this entire thing so we're going to take a look at the structure machine um and um so i'm going to call that um tape default or something tape default which is going to be a symbol uh, to NSA and the fact that we're using like a last symbol as the sort of the default uh, is means that the tape file should have at least one symbol in it otherwise we just don't know what to fill this like you have to put at, le uh, at least something to indicate what that infinite tape is filled with right so you have to do at least that which kind of makes sense, I suppose. So uh, let me see, let me see. So we're reading the tape and in here, if tape uh, len is equal to zero, all right, we have to throw an error, right? So it's gonna be print allow error. Uh, tape file might, uh, may not be empty. It must, uh, so the tape file may not be empty. It must contain at least one symbol so we know uh, what to fill the infinite tape uh, with right so in here we're going to return an error like so um cool uh in here we can do something like a tape default and can i just do something like mm, you know what um let me see let me see so we can say maybe tape default uh right and uh, let some mm, some uh, 
let's put something like a symbol and maybe we can do something like last. I think it is a thing. Uh, I think last is a thing. Uh, tape default and this is going to be the symbol. Right. So then later we can just do it like that. Yeah. Mm -mm. Okay. So let's try to compile this entire thing and it kind of... Why did it work exactly? Wait, why? I, I don't remember even... Wait, it, it's not supposed to work yet. I haven't even implemented anything. It's still supposed to crash. Mm -mm. Um, and okay. Mm -mm. Oh, that's fine. Okay, I see. I see what's going on. I see what's going on. All right, all right. Uh, and because of that, by the way, head is somewhere there. Right, 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 right. right. That, that explains it. That explains it. Um, so let me see. Let me see. Let me see. Let me see. So when we do match machine, or maybe I think it's self. I think it was case. Yeah, there we go. So here's the thing. Um, if, 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 if. Uh, self head is. Mm, greater or equal to the self tape len we have to extend it right so we're going to do self tape push and we're going to do self um tape default right so that's what we're extending with and i suppose it's not going to work that easily uh right it kind of yeah it kind of did work mm-hmm and did it actually move to the right? So it didn't because I didn't recompile. Okay, so that's that's fine. So to uh, Tula or S and let's just do it like that. So what do we have it here? Okay, uh, this is just a reference, right? Which is understandable. But so that means I want to kind of clone this entire thing. Is it possible for me to make it cloned? Huh. Cloned for symbol, okay. Uh, symbol, if I make it cloned, um, I suppose it is not going to clone the slice. It doesn't make any sense. I wonder, uh -huh. so push default, move occurs, so it doesn't implement the copy. So I wonder if I can just clone it like that then. I think we can make a symbol copy. Right, so if I make it a copy, it's not going to copy the data if that the slice is pointing at. I'm pretty sure it's not going to it's not going to do that because it doesn't make any freaking sense. I wonder if okay, so str slice or str in general implements a copy, but I probably won't be able to find that whatever. So I think it's it's fine. I think it's fine. Uh, mm -mm. But maybe not. I uh, whatever. Um, all right, so that seems to be working. Uh, that seems to be working. So now it can go to the right indefinitely. Um, so which enables us to implement some more interesting things, uh, right? So let me um, implement a decrement now. All right, so let's, let's go ahead and implement a decrement. How would you implement a decrement? Uh, so essentially, uh, if we take a, we don't even have a comment, right? So I think I will need to implement the comments. Uh, so if you have all, all of the ones, right, if you have all of the ones, it's pretty easy, right? So we're going to start with the decrement state. And if you encounter one, you switch it to zero and you just, you know, halt. It doesn't matter. So you also, that doesn't matter which, you know, direction you move into as well. So if you're at zero, it, it's kind of like a, it's symmetrical to increment. You, you switch it to, um, to one, you switch it to one and you keep going to the right. Right, so in case of one, you just do that. Uh, in case of just a bunch of zeros, you switch it to one, go to the right, switch it to one, go to the right, and then zero like that. All right, so that basically decrements it, right? So that basically decrements it. Uh, and that is not going to work that easily. That is not going to work that easily because um, the default state that we have in here is this thing, right? So 
we need to know what's going to be the default state. And as already established, as we already established, the default state is going to be um, the, the first case, right? So we have to look at the first case and uh, that's going to be the state. So uh, here we did the cases. So that also means that if the you didn't provide any cases, we can't start at all, uh, right? So let me do the following thing. So it's going to be similar to state, all right? So if um, so cases first, I suppose, let some uh, case, we've got some first case, and we're just going to do state, uh, case, uh, state. So that's the first state. Otherwise, um, we have to print something. I, I want to print the error message similar to the tape one. Uh, right, so this is going to be similar to the tape one. The um, tooler file must have at least one case, right? Must have at least one case, yes. So it must have at least one case. And in here, we're just starting with that specific case, right? So whatever was the first case, we, we start in with that. We're starting with that. So in here, we constructed the machine. Uh, yep, 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 yep. It's pretty cool. I uh, really like that. I really like what's going on. So yeah, so this was increment of odd bits. Now we can try to do the decrement. Uh, now we can try to do the decrement. Decrement for the odd bits was easy. As you can see, it's pretty trivial. But for the even bits, uh, it may become something interesting. Yeah, there we go. Uh, so that's pretty cool. Oh yeah, this is funny. So since in even bits, the last think was one it actually extended it to the infinity all right so that, that makes sense that makes sense um right now uh i'm gonna go to the even bits and i'm gonna just put zero as the last one uh right and now as you can see it, it actually worked out correctly okay so we already have a, a more or less decent um Turing machine interpreter i'm super happy about that uh we can try to implement maybe something more complicated um right in terms of like like in terms of program right one of the things i want to do is i want to implement the thing that checks whether the parentheses are balanced or not uh right i think this one is going to be very interesting so at least i i can try or give you an idea of how that thing might look like uh right so let's go parents tape so and essentially what i like to do is i like to basically split the the tape into two parts right so the first one that can uh, contains parentheses something like that then some sort of a delimiter right so let's actually use ampersand and then here we're gonna have uh, a sequence of bits right so uh and essentially and essentially the the idea um the idea of this entire thing so how do you check whether the parentheses are balanced or not uh, you essentially have a counter, right? So if you implement it in, um, you know, in a classical language like C or Rust or whatever. So you have a counter, you iterate parentheses. So if you encounter opening one, you increment the counter. If you encounter closing one, you decrement the counter. And that's how you know that the balance turn So here uh, we have the input. Again, since the uh, Turing machine works with the symbols, not the bits, you are encouraged to use whatever symbols are appropriate for the specific domain. So here we can use parentheses. So here is the input, and this one is the number. So the thing is, you can use binary numbers. Sure, you can basically simulate like incremented binary numbers and decremented binary numbers. But binary numbers are, in reality, in Turing machines, are really hard. You know what's easier than um, binary numbers? Unary numbers, right? So and how we're going to be doing unary numbers? Essentially, uh, if you want to increment something, you put one. So this is one in unary. If you want to have two, this is two, this is three, and so on and so forth. So the idea is going to be, uh, you basically take one parent, and if it's open, you have to add additional one in here. If it's closing, you have to remove that one. So that's going to be basically the idea, and that's how you're going to count. And at the end, once you reach this delimiter, once you reach this delimiter, you can look at this symbol and you can instantly see whether it's equal to zero or not. So it's going to be equal to zero if the first bit in this number is equal to zero. 
Uh, right. So uh, unary things are way easier in two emission. So uh, yeah, maybe it also makes sense to actually put the limiter here, so we know like where all of that stuff like starts and ends in here. So generally, it's going to be very much useful. So as you can see, in this two emission, um, the dictionary, the vocabulary consists of parentheses, the delimiters, and the bits, right? Mm -mm. Mm -mm. By the way, parentheses balancing is beloved programming puzzle on the interviews. This is because it's taught in a, in a CS courses. That's probably why. why. Um, to be fair, there's nothing particularly interesting in there, right? So once you know the trick, it's just like, uh, yeah, whatever. So you can even implement like different kinds of parentheses balancing. And you can adapt this idea in here. So instead of once, you would use a parentheses of the corresponding kind in here. So you transform your unary number into a stack. So from the point of view of a Turing machine, of a very simple Turing machine, there is not that much difference between a stack and a unary number, which is kind of interesting, which gives you quite an interesting insight about computing and stuff like that, right? So th there's not that much difference, right? So this is, you can also view this as a stack, why not? Anyways, so uh, yeah, but, but the problem is that if you have a, such a very like simplistic, basic Turing machine language, it's really hard to write programs like that. And that's why I want to develop like a preprocessor for this thing that is going to look like this, which allows you to sort of like automatically generate like rules in bulk. And, and you're going to see in the future, right? So in the future episodes, I'm going to show you what kind of stuff you, you'll be able to do in here. So it's going to be super cool. Uh, I promise you, my dear friend, I promise you. So anyway, let me see what we can do in here. Uh, so balanced uh, tuba. Right. So what we're going to do, we're going to start with some sort of an entry state. All right. So if I take a look at parents in here. So in the entry state, right. So we start from here, right. So right now we cannot customize from where we're going to start, right. So we can only start from zero. So in the entry state, we just replace delimiter with delimiter and move into the right. And I suppose we switch to the state where we pick um, this thing. So maybe I, I can give it like a human readable name. So this is going to be entry. <clears throat> and here we're going to call it pick. Um... <laughs> Very funny, yes. Um... <laughs> Uh, okay, so we switched in here, and um, we need to basically pick uh, this thing. Essentially, what we want to do, we want to store the parent that we picked from here in the state itself. In the state itself. Essentially, if you encounter open parent, I suppose we can just replace this thing with another open parent indic uh, with a delimiter indicating that we kind of consumed this thing, right? So we kind of consumed this thing, uh, right? And then we want to switch to um, to the state that basically increments this stuff, right? So basically increments this stuff. Uh, and then we're going to implement increment a little bit later. Uh, if being, while being in the peak state, we encountered the closing one, right, we replace it with delimiter yet again, and we go into the decrement, right? So that's basically what's going on here. So that's the thing, easiest way to approach that. So in the increment and decrement state, we first have to reach this delimiter. So essentially, uh, as we go further, while being in increment state, if we encounter opening parent, we kind of don't do anything with it, and we're just like moving forward being in increment state. As soon as we reach the delimiter in the increment state, we go to the right, and I suppose we have to switch to the phase of the increment that actually increments this entire thing. So let's call it like maybe increment one. Uh, maybe we can denote them as one and two, right? So this is going to be increment one. Uh, this is going to be increment one, and this is two, right? The similar thing is going to have uh, is going to happen in decrement, uh, right? So we can just do something like inc deck. There we go. 
So we can already try to test how it's going to work. All right, so let me get rid of all of that. So uh, let, let's just observe how it's going to uh, work. So this is going to be balanced. Uh, and then uh, we're going to have parents. And it doesn't do... Sh oh, okay, so th that took some time. Okay, so we were in entry. Right, so we didn't do anything and we switched to peak state. While in the peak state, we uh, observed an open parent. We observed an open parent. We switched to increment one. Right, we also marked it as this thing and we started to basically move uh, towards and I'm surprised that we kind of stopped. Oh, this is because we never actually considered this thing. So we have to explicitly uh, mark out all of the symbols in here. There we go. So let me see now. So now it, it should actually, yeah, there we go. Um, so we came to the conclusion that we need to increment and increment was skipping all of these parentheses in here until it reached the delimiter and then it reached the numbers and now we have to do something about that and incrementing this thing is relatively easy i think uh i think it is relatively easy because we can uh just do can do what uh, if we encountered zero we just replace it with one right so essentially um let me go to the tape let me go to the tape. Uh, we, yeah, initially it has to be zero, by the way. So I don't know why I did it like that. So we are in inc2 in here. If we encountered zero, we just go to, uh, we just set one and we have to go back. So we go into the reset state. Uh, okay, so one, and let's call it reset. Okay, cool. If it's one, all right, if we encountered one, we have to keep moving to the right. All right, so I'm going to keep it as one. And I'm going to keep moving to 1 while being in ink 2 state. Okay, so that's that's good. Uh, all right, let's actually test if it's going to work. Uh, so I think that's going to be very much interesting. I think it's going to be very much interesting. All right, so... Okay, so that's cool. So as you can see, we reached ink 2. All right, then we set it to 1 and then we went for a reset. All right. So we went for a reset. Okay, so that's cool. So what's going to be the next one? So maybe we can try to develop the reset. So reset has to actually be in two phases, honestly. I think reset has to be in two phases because you need to first skip the bits and then skip the parentheses, right? So um, we can call it like that. Maybe we're going to call it reset bits, uh, right? And reset bits. As it encounters bits, it keeps moving to the left, right? As you can see, it keeps moving to the left. As soon as we set bits encounters the delimiter, it switches its state to reset parents. And reset parents uh, basically does that. So if it's open, we keep moving in reset parents in all of these directions. Uh, and as soon as we encounter uh, the left delimiter in there, right, the left delimiter, we move in to the right, um, and I suppose we switch into state peak, right? So yeah, but basically we, we have to do that in two, in two phases, right? So we have to reset this entire thing in two phases. Um, there we go. That all of, holy shit! That already worked out. Okay, so as you can see, uh, initially we had two of these things and it managed at the end increment this number by two, but it stopped at decrementing. Okay, so it picked the closing one and since we didn't implement decrement, it halted at the decrement, but it managed to actually increment it by two. It already works. It actually already works. So we just need to implement the decrement properly. Uh, so as you can see, the main problem with this language, it already works. It's already kind of useful language, but you have to like write out explicitly way too many rules in here. It would be kind of nice if there was some sort of a language uh, that allowed you to generate those rules. And this is the point of this project, by the way. This is the point of this project. Uh, damn, that's actually pretty cool. It is fucking cool. It is fucking cool. Um, 
I can't wait for the name of the wrapper. I don't think it's going to have like a separate name, right? It's going to be part of the same language. It's just like it's you can think of it as a sort of preprocessor, but in reality, it's not going to be really preprocessor. Um, so roughly, it's going to look like this. I'm not going to explain exactly what is going on in here, but you can kind of already get the feeling of what it is. You can ki kind of get rid of feeling of what it is. Uh, right, so yeah. I'll explain that in the future episodes. Uh, and at the end, I'm going to make a, an entire video. So here is the thing. The idea is pretty simple here. So it's an idea for a single video. But the problem is that it will t it takes way too much time to implement that idea. Right. And because of that, it's just like it's perfect for the format that I developed, right, where I just on a stream uh, develop this entire project and then making one single video. I think it's kind of perfect for this. Right. So, yeah. Looks like assembly. It's kind of is assembly because Turing Machine is pretty low level language, honestly. Um, <clears throat> anyways, so we need to implement the decrement. Uh, with the decrement, it's uh, yeah. So we halt it at yeah. That's kind of bizarre. Um, oh yeah, this is because I don't have a decrement one. Yeah, I should have actually called it one. Uh, so that means the decrement now should stop at here. So the decrement is actually a little bit difficult, right? Because we have to remove one at the end there. We have to remove one at the end there. So let's see how we can do that. Um, so decrement two. I need to have a tape in front of me so I can see what is going on. Um, so parents tape. If I have this kind of situation, uh, right, and I already reached decrement two so somewhere here. If I at decrement two, I encounter one, I guess I just ignore it and keep moving to the right uh, until I encounter, I guess, zero. But what I have to do, I have to remove that last one. Right. If I encounter zero, I suppose I have to go to the right. Uh, right. And I suppose have to switch to decrement three. Right. Where if I encounter one, I go to the zero, move to the right and then reset everything. And I have to probably do reset bits, right? So that will replace it with uh, zero. And then it will do the usual reset protocol where it will just start doing this kind of things. Okay. But here's an interesting thing. What if you encounter this kind of situation? You basically underflow, right? So deck three is going to end up being this. So in that case, you can actually quite confidently say that this entire thing is unbalanced. So we can denote the outcome of the algorithm with a halt state. So we're not going to implement this state. So that means it's going to halt at this state. But we can use it to indicate, OK, so that's the outcome, right? If ever the number underflows, that means it's unbalanced, right? So it will underflow in this kind of situation. It will 100% underflow in this kind of situation. Um, all right, so that's cool. Mm, yeah, reset bits, and I suppose. So the only thing it will uh, we'll also have to check um, this thing after we're sort of done processing all these things. We'll see how it goes. Okay, so let's actually go and see how it's going to process all of that stuff. Okay, that's pretty cool. So it processed all of these things, as you can see, it processed all of these things, and then it ended up with the state peak and this delimiter, state peak and this delimiter. So that means maybe we have to implement this kind of stuff, right? Implement this situation. So you have peak open or closed, or you can have peak this. And to be fair, in case of a pick this, if you encounter this kind of situation, so let me copy paste this entire stuff, right? If you encounter this kind of situation, uh, after that, you probably want to go to the right and check whether the number is zero or one, right? So that's what you want to do. If it's zero, that means they're balanced. If it has one, that means the counter is greater than one. So that means they're unbalanced. So, um, we want to do the following thing, I guess, move to the right and let's call it verify and verify if we encounter zero, we're going to say balanced. And if we encounter one, we're going to say unbalanced. 
So that should work. Uh, okay, let's, let's try to run it. Okay, so the algorithm said that it's balanced. Let's try to actually make them unbalanced. How can we make them unbalanced? We can um, make it so the counter at the end is greater than zero, right? So uh, let's see if it's going to work like that. Yeah, it is unbalanced, and as you can see, the counter is greater than zero, right? So that, that is actually happened. Now we can try to make it under flow, right? So it's, it's easy to make it under flow, just like add one extra thing in here. Uh, right, and it is unbalanced because at deck three it underflowed. So we just implemented an algorithm in pure Turing machine that checks balanced parentheses, and it's this huge. Right. So, isn't that powers? I think that's pretty freaking powers. So, something like rule 110 will require even more different rules right so you see you have to constantly check this combination of things and stuff like that and it's very much inconvenient it is very much inconvenient you need an additional thing that will allow you to express this kind of things in a more generic way and we're going to implement this thing already on the next episode so yeah uh we're going to work on this like you know pre-processor pre so to speak preprocessor so to speak and that will enable us implementing even more complicated algorithms i'll try to come up with more interesting examples for this thing but yeah so once you understand how this entire thing works and once you are enabled with this kind of language turing machine doesn't feel like a turing tar pit anymore right and that could be actually the theme of the video that i'm gonna make right so that like you know um defeating the Turing tar pit so yeah anyways uh so i guess that's it for today thanks everyone who's watching right now i really appreciate that have a good one and I see you all in the next recreation programming session with the mr zozin as usual love you Mwah.